Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is horizontally launched projectile problems. And that's exactly what we want to learn to do today. How do you solve a horizontally launched projectile problem? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Let's begin with the question, what is a horizontally launched projectile? It's simply an object that is projected horizontally from the top of an elevated position, like a tall cliff, that travels through the air acted upon only by the force of gravity. For such projectiles, what we know is that originally it's moving only horizontally. It's horizontally launched. There's no vertical velocity originally, so what we can say is that originally the y velocity is zero. And two more things we can say about our projectile, because it is a projectile acted up on only by gravity, we know that it travels through the air horizontally with a constant velocity, that is ax is zero, and it travels through the air with a downwards acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. These three factoids we see in red here are going to be used throughout each problem that we do in this video. In a previous video, this one, we discussed the use of kinematic equations in the analysis of projectile problems. We learned that because the horizontal and the vertical motion are independent of each other, we must use two sets of kinematic equations, one for the horizontal and one for the vertical. And we must take known values of variables and make sure the horizontal values go in the horizontal equations and the vertical values in the vertical equations. No mixing and matching. Now, as we go through this video, we're going to learn a five-step strategy for solving a projectile problem. And the first step is to read the problem and diagram it so you can develop a mental picture of what's going on. The second step is to identify all known variables and to relate them to symbols in the equations. Like you might say, VOX equal 12 meters per second. The third step is to identify the unknown variable. Again, use the corresponding symbol, like you might say, dy equal question mark. The fourth step is to select your equations to use from among our choices that you see here. And the fifth step is to substitute values into the equation and do your algebra until you arrive at an answer to what the unknown value is. I'm going to demonstrate the use of that five-step method in order to solve or at least begin a projectile problem. Now, step two and three of that five-step method involve identifying the known and the unknown values and relating it to a symbol. So one useful means of doing that is the use of an XY table, where you list what's known and unknown in two columns, one for the X information and one for the Y information. We'll see how that works here. Here's the problem I'm going to, to model the solution to. And the first step is to read and diagram. So I'm going to read this problem. Ball is launched horizontally at 12.8 meters per second. I pay attention to units, and that tells me this has got to be a velocity. From the top of a 17.9 meter high cliff, that sounds like it's giving me a distance vertically. And then it says, how far from the base of the cliff does the ball land? So that's the reading. Here's the diagram. I mean, it just needs to be a simple diagram. I have a cliff, and, and there's some ground down below. The ball starts at the top of the cliff and lands on the ground below. And I'm going to show three values, or at least three variables. dx, always measured horizontally at the base of the cliff. dy, a vertical displacement. And vox, the original velocity of the ball. So I show the arrow right up there at the ball's location. It's a horizontal arrow because it's shot horizontally. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take the two bits of information in my word problem and anything else I know and put it in an XY table in the appropriate space. Now this is a projectile. What I know about projectiles is I know the bottom row of this table. I know that AX is 0 and AY is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is a horizontally launched projectile. So originally there's no Y velocity, just an X. So I know VOY is 0 meters per second. Now I look at my problem statement, and there's two numbers. I have to get them in the right spot in my table. The 12.8 meters per second is a velocity, and that's originally in the x direction. So I put that in the VOX cell of the table, and the 17.9 is a vertical displacement. I put that where it belongs, and you notice I put negative because it was displaced down. All right, those are the five things I know. Here's the one thing I'm looking for, the horizontal displacement. How far from the base of the cliff does the ball land? That's dx. Now, here's why this is so important. Your step four is to pick some equations you'll want to use, and your step five is to substitute and solve. If you have this xy table built out for you, then you know what you know, and you'll be able to pick the equation that works. 
The typical way this would work is you look in one of the two columns for three bits of information. And in this case, in the Y column, I have three bits of information. Then I'm going to use a Y equation to solve for time. Once I get the time, that gives me time plus two bits of horizontal information in order to solve for the horizontal unknown value, the dx. So the big idea is you look for three bits of information on one side or the other side of the table, use those bits of information to solve for t, then use info from the other column to solve for whatever you're looking for. We'll see how that works with three examples. Here we go. Here's example one, and the first step of my strategy is to read and diagram. So a ball rolls off a 1.42 meter high table. Ball on a table has a speed of 2.63 meters per second. It's rolling horizontally, and it rolls off, and it says how far from the base of the table does it land. Here's my diagram. I draw a table, just a quick sketch. I put a ball at the top. It's rolled off the table. I put the original x velocity. It's given as 2.63 meters per second, and then it goes through the typical trajectory and lands on the on the ground and I label dx I'm looking for that and I know the height of the table so the dy is a negative or a down 1.42 meters all right so that's my first step my second step uses an xy table in order to ID the knowns and the unknowns so here's my xy table and I have to fill it out now it's a projectile so you know the bottom row ax is 0 ay is negative 9.8 and since it's horizontally launched, there's no original y velocity, so I know voy is 0. Now there's two numbers here. There's a velocity, 2.63, and that's an original velocity x word. So I put that in the table along with the 1.42 meters for the dy. It went down, so I put a negative 1.42 meters. Now that takes, oh, and what I'm looking for is dx. Now that takes care of my id the knowns, id the unknown. Now I want to pick an equation or equations, and I want to solve for my unknown dx value. So if I look in my table, what I notice is I have three bits of information in the y column. So I'm going to look for a vertical equation that has dy, voy, and ay in it. And I'm going to use it to solve for time. So here's your equations right here. And it's the first one top left that has just what I need to solve for time. So I'm going to use that equation. I write it down, and then I'm going to substitute values of dy and ay y and voy into the equation. Now the second term is negative 4.9 t squared and that just comes from 1 half times negative 9.8 t squared. That's already been substituted for me. But what I can do is put negative 1.42 meters in for dy and then I can put uh, 0 in for voy and that means the first term on the right side cancels out. 0 times time is 0. So now I can divide both sides of the equation by 4.9 and I end up with the negative 1.42 divided by negative 4.9 equal t squared. And I can take the square root of each side and I get myself a time. And I'm not going to round the value. I'm just going to write down 0.5383 blah blah blah. And I'm going to keep the number on my calculator because I'm going to use that number. Now take a deep breath. You're ready to finish up. We use the y column to get the time. So now we're going to use information from the x column to get the dx. So here's the one x equation we have. It's just one that you'll ever, you know, the only one you'll ever use is this one. So dx equal vox times t. And vox is given to me as 2.63, and I just calculated the time. So I'm going to take the number on my calculator, the time, and I'm going to multiply by 2.63 and I solve for dx. And then there's rules for how you round things. Pay attention to what your teacher suggests. Typically, they have to do a significant digit. So you don't have to write out 16 numbers on your sheet of paper. You just write 1.42 meters, three significant digits here. I'm going to do examples two and three differently using a sheet of paper and a writing utensil because the likelihood is that's how you'll be doing your problems. And you probably should see it done that way. So here it goes. So here's my example two problem with a problem solving strategy listed. My first step of the strategy is to read the problem carefully and to diagram it. As I read the problem, I'm going to give attention to the numbers and the units, making an effort to determine whether I know dx, dy, or vox. As I diagram, I'm going to represent the initial position of the book, the final position of the book, and I'm going to label the dx, the dy, and the vox on the diagram. The next step of this process involves identifying the knowns and unknowns in the problem. I'm going to use an xy table to do this. So I create my xy table, and I'm going to record values of dx and dy, vox and voy, and ax and ay in each respective column. For any projectile, I always know ax and ay values being 0 and negative 9.8. And for a horizontally launched projectile, I know that voy is 0. There's two more numerical values in the problem statement. I use the word 
words around those numbers and the units that are with those numbers to identify what they represent. Then I'm going to identify the unknown, the dy, in the problem, and then I'm done with my second and third step. Now I'm ready for steps four and five of the strategy. I look at my xy table and notice there's three bits of information in the x column. So I'm going to need to use an x equation to solve for t. There's only one of those, so I write it down. dx equal vox times t. Using values from the x column, I substitute them into the equation. Now I have an algebra problem. I divide both sides by 12.5, and then using a calculator, I calculate the time to be 2.544 seconds. Now I have to calculate dy. This time I've just calculated can be considered y information. I have to use it along with the other two givens to calculate dy. I need the right formula. I look at my list and I find the first formula top left is the one to use. I write it down. The second term of this formula on the right side is simply one half ayt squared. It's already done for me. The first term cancels because voy is zero. Now I substitute the value of t into the equation, pull out my calculator and I solve for dy. It's negative 31.7 meters. If the book falls 31.7 7 meters down, then the height of the window above the ground is 31.7 meters. We'll discuss example 3 a little bit more quickly, but we'll pay attention to the strategy. It begins with reading and diagramming. As you read, pay attention to the numbers. Try to figure out what they represent. When you diagram, show the initial location of the stone, the final location of the stone, and then label the dx, the dy, and the vox. As you do steps 2 and 3, you will use an xy table. In the table include dx and dy, vox and voy, ax and ay. Put the usual numbers for ax and ay, that's 0 and negative 9.8 meters per second squared. For voy, it's 0 since this projectile is horizontally launched. There's two numbers in the problem statement. They're both distances. Put them in the appropriate place. The 52.5 meters is negative because the stone is falling downwards. 43.8 is the dx value. We're trying to find what the VOX is. Once you're done with the XY table, you're ready for step four. Steps four and five involve picking an equation, substituting, and solving. When I look at my XY table, I see three pieces of known information in the Y column. That means I'm going to use a Y equation to solve for the time. So I inspect my equations, and I notice it's the first one, top left of the list, that I can use to solve for time. So I begin by writing it down. The VOY in this problem is zero, so the first term right side cancels. The second term right side is just simply the one-half AT squared that we're used to seeing there. Now I substitute values of DY into the equation, and now I have to solve for t. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 4.9, evaluate negative 52.5 divided by negative 4.9 to be 10.714, and that's equal to t squared. If I take the square root of both sides, I will be solving for t. It's 3.27-ish seconds. This value of time is used with both x and y information to do calculations, so I can use it with my x information in order to solve for my unknown, vox, but first I must pick an equation. When I look, there's only one equation I ever use, so I write it down. Then I take values for dx and t and substitute it in. I have to do algebra to solve for vox, so I divide each side of the equation by 3.2732. When I do, I can find out what vox is using my calculator. It's 13.4 meters per second, or 13.3811 meters per second. Hey, you got this. In a moment, I'll be giving you an action plan. But before I do, I'd like to ask you to help us out. If you enjoyed the video, maybe you can give us a like or subscribe to our channel or leave a question or comment in the comments section below. Here's your action plan. At our website, we have a section called the Calculator Pad with a collection of problems, answers, and audio guided solution. It's an awesome tool. We have a concept builder section at our website. And one of the concept builders is called Trajectory, Horizontally Launched project Projectiles. That's an awesome way to practice what you've learned in this video. And finally, we have a tutorial section on our website, and there you'll find a page on horizontally launched projectile problems with some examples and solutions. Great way to freshen up on things. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.